Um, last Sunday, as Brother Randy was closing out his, his wonderful sermon, I, I took a few minutes and I talked some out of the latter part of, of uh, 1 John chapter 1. This morning, I would like to go back to the beginning of that chapter and, uh, and read. Uh, I, last Sunday, I talked about 5 through, through 10, kind of started at the bottom. But I want to start this morning back at the top and read down to, uh, and, uh, read, uh, including verse 5. This is 1 John, the first epistle of General of John, <laughs> uh, as, the, as the title is. And if you have your scriptures, you can join with me in the reading of God's word. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, and we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life. For the life was manifest, and we have seen it, and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. These things write we unto you that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Now, uh, we can't imagine, I mean, light, darkness is the absence of light. There's degrees of, 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 of uh, uh, darkness, you know, it, uh, and I've said this before, and uh, my wife and I and kids, children, we went down inside of, of Cal- College Brad Cabin. Have you ever done that? You ever been? And uh, uh, the only light that's down there is what they take with them. And they turned out all of the lights, and it's when you can't even see your hand in front of your face, that's dark. Well, even that, uh, it says, in God, there is no darkness at all. Darkness is figurative, of course, of sin. Uh, It is, we have a darkness in, I mean, man, uh, that is born of a woman, it says in Pro- Proverbs, is a few days and full of trouble. A few days and full of trouble. It says it goes forth as soon as he's born, speaking lies. That's the way man is uh, in its natural state. But I don't, I don't want to talk about those this morning. I want to think this morning about the verses, uh, specifically verses 1 through 3. Notice it says, that which was from the beginning. I believe that First John, uh, the First John, there's there's First John, Second John, Third John, but First John is it says it's a general epistle. That means it's generally it's for generally all of God's children, specifically those who believe that Jesus is the Christ. I believe it's probably uh, more or less a sequent sequel uh, to the Gospel of John. John wrote uh, he wrote. The Gospel of John. He wrote this. He wrote First, Second John, and Third John, and he also wrote the Book of Revelations. But this specific one, it uh, you won't find John, uh, John saying, uh, "I, John, write these." But we know from the from the way that it's written and from the the association with his gospel, the very same things that he's writing of here, he referred to in in his gospel message. And notice it's that which was from the beginning. The beginning, I, we could say that, well, what's the beginning? The beginning of what? Well, uh, specifically the beginning of time. But I, I believe that John here may be talking about in the beginning of my ministry even, uh, when, he, when he met with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but it says, in, that which was from the beginning, now notice here is, here is the, the senses being exercised. We have that which we have heard with our ear, that which we have seen with our eyes, and that which we have ha- looked upon, and that which we have handled with our hands. Uh, uh, the word of life. You know, it, the word of life. When we talk about life, uh, the, of course, the opposite of life is death, and the death and life are, are uh, if, if you're either, 
You know, some people think, well, uh, how dead is somebody? <laughs> uh, when you think about death, there is no degrees in death. You're either alive or you're, you're dead. Uh, so it says, for, for the life was manifest, the life, I want us to think about the word of life, the word of life, and the life. The, the word of life for the life was manifested and we have seen it. We bear witness to it. I mean, when we talk about bearing witness, there is several types of witness. There's circumstantial witnesses. There is, there's something that somebody, you told me this and somebody told me this and somebody told me. And uh, he's not here saying, I'm going to tell you or write about things that somebody said or some things that I heard somebody say. He said, I'm going to tell you I am a personal eyewitness of that which I'm telling you. I'm not giving you my opinion. I'm giving you the, by authority that which I have seen, heard, and handled, which is the word of life. Uh, for the, this life was manifested. The word manifest means it was made known. It was revealed to us. This word was, this life was manifested and we have seen it and we bear witness and show it unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. He's saying this word, this word of life is eternal. Uh, when you talk about eternal life, I mean, if, if, we, if you could have a life and you couldn't, I mean, and you lose that life, it would not be eternal life. You, eternal is something that does not have a, a beginning or an ending. It has always been. And that's what he is saying here. The life that was manifest to us, it is, it is that eternal life was manifested to us. That, and notice verse three, that which we have seen, he keeps going over this, this which we have seen and heard, we're declaring it unto you. I want you to hear this word and to understand that this is the message. For, of course, we understand that John was writing by divine inspiration. I mean, we, uh, we must believe that, uh, and uh, we've, we've quoted that verse several different times all throughout our ministry, but it says all scripture. That means from Genesis to Revelations, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. That means God breathed. It says holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So we must understand that, uh, and, and uh, there is many... Uh, the apostle in this in this uh, in this book, he addresses several er errors, uh, um, not arrows, but errors that uh, has has been perpetrated all throughout uh, uh, this time. There was there were scoffers and mockers. There was unbelievers. There was those that, and I said last week, there are those that actually uh, were teaching that man can't sin. That, uh, that once you're born to the Spirit of God, you don't sin anymore. Well, that's an error. And John, uh, he addresses that. And then there is one error that he says that, uh, uh, that some are saying that, that uh, Jesus was just, I mean, when, when, when you have the Word of God, Jesus became the Son of Man. He became the Son of God. He became, actually became the Son of God when he was born of a woman. Well, this, this verse, this first verse refutes that. We, it, it talks about the eternal sonship of Jesus Christ. He was with the Father before the foundation of the world. And that's, that's where we want to kind of begin this morning. I want to uh, turn, turn over to the Gospel of John uh, very quickly and, and uh, uh, pick up some of the things that, that, uh, that he's saying here about this. And we, from reading this, we understand and we know specifically that this is indeed where he's talking about. He said, in the beginning, that, that which we have seen was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen, which our eyes have, uh, and which are, have looked upon, our hands have handled the word of life, the word of life. This word that we're talking about gives life. It is life. And this is what he says in, in John chapter, in, in, in the gospel of John. Remember, uh, we're, this is the same writer referring back that which was in the beginning, from the beginning. Uh, and in John chapter one, it says in the beginning, in the beginning. What is the beginning? <laughs> uh, the beginning here is in the beginning of time. Before there was ever anything created before everything started, before there was actually a world 
uh, to live in. He says, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. It's important that we see this is the eternal Son of God, the, the, one, uh, the one that was with God the Father before the world began. And it says here, uh, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Uh, uh, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Uh, so everything that we see, touch, smell, or taste, everything in this world was created by God. And there is no life. There can be no life, whether it's animal life, plant life, or human life. There can be no life at all except it come from this one who is the word of life. He is the, he is the, he is the source of all life. And it also says that he is light. Uh, uh, he is the light of the world. Now notice it says, uh, in him was life, in him was life, and uh, in him was life, and, uh, and the life was the light of men. So remember, it says, he is, he is the light, in him is no darkness. So when God shines his light <laughs> into the soul of man, uh, who is, uh, it, in one, the apostle Paul says in one place, he said, you were sometimes darkness. He didn't say you were in darkness. There's a difference in being in darkness and being darkness. Uh, the, he said, you were sometimes darkness, but when the light of God shined into your heart, you became the light. And, and that's why that, that, that the, the, the messages of the Lord Jesus Christ in so many different places, he said, and, and John, in the uh, uh, Sermon on the Mount, he says to us, you are the light of the world. Uh, if there's any light in this world, it is going to come from the radiance of, of God's children shining into it. That's why he says, let your light, if you have a light, it came from the giver of all life, and that is God. If you have a life, you have a light. And that light, it says, you know, men don't, uh, men don't light a, a candle and put it under a bushel. Men don't light a, light a candle and put it under and cover it up. He says, you, uh, you put it on a candlestick so it may shine. And he says, let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So the light that we have, it's, we're, we're like the moon. The moon has no light of itself, does it? The light is a, the moon is a reflection of the sun. We, we have no light except it is reflected from the S-O-N of God. And uh, this is, it's important that we begin here, uh, and you have some, some people that do not even believe in God. It's hard for us to imagine that, but there are those that, and when the apostle is, is writing over here to, to, the, to the people in 1 John, he's writing to believers in Jesus Christ. That's who he's writing to. Uh, he's not writing to unbelievers. He's writing to those who believe in God, those who believe in the Son of God. And uh, this, this light, it's important that we see that this, the light, the Word of God was with God the Father before he ever created the earth. It's important we see this. There's a lot of people that deny this. And I, I want to, uh, I, I know that I'm, I may be very scattered this morning, but I want to go over to the beginning. He says, in the beginning. Well, what happened in the beginning? Well, it, it says, and this is, uh, it's so beautiful, uh, the very same words, in the beginning. In the beginning. In the beginning what? In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God created uh, uh, the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without, I can't imagine this. Everything that we see has some kind of form. It has some kind of substance. But he says the earth, and in one place he says that he just hung the earth out there on empty space. Can you imagine what holds this earth up? It's some mysterious thing called gravity. Can you explain gravity to me? Uh, that's what holds these things. It's the majesty of God is what it is. But uh, it says here, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God, the spirit of God moved upon the, the face of the waters and God said, 
This word God, by the way, uh, is the, the, the Hebrew word Elohim, Elohim, which uh, it means a it means the supreme God. It also has a a, a plurality. It's a, there is a plurality that is set forth in this, and we'll we'll show that to you in just a minute. But we know in in this very in this very uh, uh, book that we began with in First John chapter five, we find this expression that uh, there are three that bear record in in the in he, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. I don't understand that. You know, I don't, I don't have to understand everything about this in order to believe it. Uh, the point here is, if we are born to the Spirit of God and it's written in His Word, we've got to have a standard to go by, and if it's written in the Word of God, it's the truth. All true, all Scripture is true, whether you believe them or not. It doesn't change the thing. It doesn't change anything at all. But it, and now notice it says, and, and God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. You see, the light shined into darkness. The darkness doesn't shine into the light. Uh, there could be no light except the light, which is, uh, and I want, I want you to, uh, I've said this before, on, that on the fourth day, the fourth day of creation, God created the sun, the moon, and the stars, right? Four days. Four days down here. This is day one. He said, let there be light. And I, I, I challenge you this morning to tell me where that light came from. Where did the light on day one come from when there was no sun, moon, or stars? I tell you, brothers and sisters, this is the divine light of God. This is the light of God that is spoken of in John chapter 1, uh, 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 where it says, he is the light. John the Baptist, when he came into the world, he said, I'm not light, I'm not the light. I am come to bear witness of the light. He has said, uh, he is the light of the world. And this is when, when there was darkness everywhere. But when God makes his presence known, darkness Please. Darkness, uh, the light of God and darkness cannot occupy the same place. There is light, and, and it's the light. And you remember when the Apostle Paul was, was on the road to Damascus? You remember that the story about the Apostle Paul? He said that he, was, he had orders in his hands to throw into prison uh, those that call upon God. And it says that, uh, that during that time, it says there was a light from heaven that shone round about me brighter than the noonday sun. Uh, the sun is a very bright thing. You, can look, you, you, can, you can't look at it without burning your retina. Now think about the light that created that light and how bright it is. It says the light shone round about Paul and he was blinded by just looking at the light. But the light that we're talking about here is the light of the Son of God. That's, that's what he's talking about in John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word. What's the Word? We're going to tell you. The Word is the, the Word here. Now notice it says, And God saw the light that it was good, and he divided the, the light from darkness, and he called the light, he called the light day, and he called the darkness night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. The first day. Well, I don't have time to go through all those days, but I, I want to get to the I want to get to the seventh day, or the sixth day. I mean, uh, we know that on, the, on he, he created the animals and so forth. And uh, now, uh, let's see. Okay, on the on the uh, on the fifth day, he created the animals. He brought forth abundantly at their kind after their kind and everything. And but remember this. They got their life the same place you got yours. There is no life outside of the giver of life. All right, in, in uh, verse 24 of chapter 1. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature, 
uh, after his kind and creeping thing and, and the beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind and the cattle and after uh, their kind, everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God said, it was good. It's good. Everything God did was good. But listen to verse 26. Now notice, I want you to look at the, the plurality of the pronouns. He said, God said, let us. Who's he talking about? God said, let us make man in our image. We're going to make man in our image. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And, and, and so God created man. God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male, don't you get this? Man, woman was in the man when God created the man. That's what this verse says. Listen to it. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he, him. Male and female created he, them. Now, the, the point in reading all that is this, is that here is, he said, let us make man. And we already know that who the us was, uh, in John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Those three. Those were the ones that was with, and, and, and it's such a beautiful picture when we can think about that, that uh, when Jesus came to this world, he came for the sole purpose of doing the will of his Father. Uh, of his Father. And it says, uh, uh, and, and we know all of those scriptures about, about the, the covenant of God. It said, but it says, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Everything that we have is in Christ Jesus. Outside of Christ Jesus, we have nothing. There is nothing outside of Christ. Oh yeah, there's the natural world out here, but every one of them will we'll, we'll disannul everything that I'm telling you now. Let us make man in our image. Now, and we know the rest of the, uh, we know the rest of the story, but, uh, uh, but and that, let, let's skip over now to, to uh, chapter two, just a minute. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Uh, Genesis 2, 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and he closed up the flesh instead thereof. This is uh, uh, the first surgery, I guess. And this was a great doctor. He performed this surgery, and he took this rib out of man. Now notice it says, And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. We, we as, as, as husbands, we need to understand that this woman, if you have a, a wife or if you've had one, recognize the fact that she is a gift from God. God said, it is not good that man live alone. It's not good that man live alone. I mean, here's all of the animals that they had their mates and they had their, 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 their uh, uh, companions, but man had nobody. And God looked and he, and of course, uh, God created man and woman. And it's a, it's a holy, sacred thing. This is the first marriage. It is a divine institution given by God. Uh, and he said, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man, he, he uh, made her uh, a woman and he brought her. And Adam said, now notice what Adam said. This is now bone of my bones, bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, therefore, husbands, therefore shall a man leave his father. I, I've used this almost every time I perform a marriage sermon. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother 
and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked. God put these natural desires and instincts. Now some say, well, uh, and, and I had a conversation this morning about a, 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 a lady that says, well, uh, the, real, the real sin, the, real, the original sin was sex. That's not a sin. That's a natural thing. That's just as, that's just as natural as, uh, and it, God put that desire and into, that, into that man and woman that they would cleave to each other and that they would love one another and they become one flesh. One flesh. Not two. He said, you were, you were two, now you're one. But when this, when this, when this God-given gift is exercised outside of marriage, it's sin. It's, uh, uh, it, it is sin, but, uh, uh, and, and that's why that is so many, there, you know, you, you think about the, the, that, that one sin is probably more prevalent in the Bible than any other, and it's the same thing in the world today. That, that one sin of, of sexual desire toward the opposite sex, it, it, it's a natural thing, brothers and sisters. There's nothing wrong with that. God created that, but when it's outside of your marriage, it becomes something that God does not approve. He does not. Now I said, that's all free. Let's go back to John chapter 1, and we'll try to, to summarize. And, and this has taken longer than I thought it would. But John chapter 1, again, he said, There was a man sent from God, verse 6 of John 1, whose name was John. The same came to, for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. And notice a capital L-I-G-H-T, Phil. That's the light. The light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And there, there's, there, when, you, when you think about darkness, uh, when man sinned, he became darkness. The original sin, by the way, was that God said unto the man, he gave him a law. He gave him a law. That law was, thou shalt not, that of all of the trees of the garden, you may freely eat, all of them except one. He said, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat thereof, neither, uh, uh, he said, for in the, day that the, in the day that you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. It didn't say that uh, in the, when you eat of this, brother Tommy, it didn't say you're going to die 930 years later. He did. But death was passed upon all men. That's what it says in Romans chapter 5, verse, uh, uh, verse uh, 17, I think, or so. But anyway, it says, by, or 12, by one man, one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin. So death is passed upon all men for all of sin. Death. But we have life. <laughs> Oh, this is so awesome. Uh, and when we think about that, that Jesus came for the sole purpose, that, that was the whole thing he came for. What did you come for, Lord? What did Jesus come for? He said, I came down from heaven. For what reason? I came down from heaven to do the will of my Father. And this is the will of my Father that have sent me, that of all that he gave me, when did he give them to you? When, son, when did you receive these? I, they were given to me and their name, uh, they were written in a book. Uh, before the foundation of the world, their name was given there. And, and every single one that was given to me by the Father, he said, I came to redeem. Every one of them. And th this is the doctrines that this church was, is, is so beautifully set upon. But we believe that Jesus came. That's what Matthew 1, Matthew, you remember Matthew 1, 21? We love that verse. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. Why? For he shall save his people from their sins. 
He shall save his people from eternal death. That's what he came to do. Brethren, he is life, and there is no life out there. There is only one way that a man can be saved, and that's through Jesus Christ. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of, of, of various religions in the world today, but if any of them goes to heaven, they're all going to go to heaven because of the blood of the Son of God. There is, there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. There is no other way that a person can, can live in eternal glory except they be redeemed by the blood of the Savior. Zero. None. Now, let's, let's keep on going. Uh, he came unto... Now, this is a, a beautiful point here. And there's a lot of things I could say about these verses. But it says, he, at, uh, he, verse 11, He came unto his own. He came unto his own. Who is that? That's, his, that's the Jewish people. They were given, I mean, the Jews were the, the, the people of God. He said, I didn't choose you because you were the greatest people. I set my love upon you because you were the least of these people. Why did God love you? Can you answer me that? Why does God love you? You know, I, I, there's people get so hung up on, on, uh, on Jacob and Esau. It says God, uh, God loved Jacob and he hated Esau. You say, well, I don't really, I don't think he really hated Esau. I think he just loved him less than he did Jacob. Brethren, the Bible says he hated him. Are you going to believe the Bible or are you going to believe man's opinion? God says, let every man, uh, let God be true and every man a liar. If it's not according to thus saith the word, the Lord, uh, 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 thus saith the word of God, uh, then it's, uh, it's of man. You know, uh, I, I remember some of the things Brother Bill said. Well, what do you, well, uh, I said, what do you think about this? And he said, well, I, 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 uh, I have an opinion. I have an opinion. But my opinion ain't made more, any better than your opinion. I have an opinion, but what does the Word of God say? You know, what do you think? Uh, well, what do you think? If it's not according to thus saith the Lord, then it's, it's error. But in any way, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. He came unto the Jewish nation, these people, they, uh, they were looking for a military Messiah. They were looking for someone to come riding down the streets of Jerusalem on the big white steed, uh, 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 going to redeem them from the Roman Empire. But they were not looking for a lowly man uh, that came riding in to Jerusalem upon the, the, the uh, back of a, a donkey. They were not. But... It says, as many as received him. Some did receive him. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Now that word, uh, people say, well, see there, you have to believe in order to become a son of God. The word sons of God, that means children. Uh, th th this means uh, 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 he gave you authority in a manifest sense. If you believe that Jesus is the Christ, you have a witness inside of you. Now notice the rest of the story. We, that's not a period there. Uh, uh, he says, he came unto his own, his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them which believe on his name. Now notice, those that believe on his name, which were born, they were already born. Believing didn't make them a child of God. But it says, uh, 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 but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them which believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man. This, 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 they were not born to, by the will of, of it, it wasn't according to your will, it wasn't according to the will of man, it wasn't according to the will of grandpa and grandma, but it was of God. They were born already of God. And that's the, that's the, uh, that, that brings us to verse 14, and we're just about out of time. Now notice verse 14, capital W. Hmm. And the word, what word? This is the one that was with God the Father before the foundation of the world. This was the, wor this was the one we read about over there in Genesis where that he and God, he, the God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know, there is, there's not three, we don't believe in three gods. We believe in one God and three personalities. 
Uh, uh, they have three, there's three personages. Uh, uh, God the Father chose you, right? God the Son redeemed you, and God the Holy Spirit regenerates you or gives you life. They're all one. They're not, they're, he said, these three are one. There's never been a disagreement in the Godhead. Never. The Son, uh, uh, the Son came to save those that was given to him by the Father. And the Holy Spirit gives life to all of those that the Son redeemed. Not one shall be lost. That's why Jesus said, Father, behold, all that thou hast given me, here they are, I have lost nothing. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word that's, the, that's, that's the, the, the word of God, the son of God, the Jehovah God, if you please, the great I am of, uh, uh, of Exodus where he says, uh, uh, who shall I say sent me unto you, unto them. That's what the, the, the uh, uh, Egyptian will say. And God said, tell them I am that I am has sent thee. It's not I will be or I was. I am. He is an eternal now. There is no past. There's no present, I mean, there's no future. Uh, he is who he is. He is the word of God. Now notice, and, and there, the, the principles are set forth in several places, but one of my favorite ones is in Galatians chapter four. I've, I've used it several times, but it says in Galatians four, it says, when the fullness, when the fullness of the time was come, when it was the time for Jesus to come, when he didn't come too late and he didn't come too early. He came on time. When the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman. Now, that's, what we, that's why we, 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 uh, we teach the, the, the virgin birth. That's why, brothers and sisters, that Jesus, what, Jesus didn't have an earthly father. He had an earthly mother and a heavenly father. There was no, uh, uh, I mean, if we understand the principle when God uh, passed sin upon man, if there was one, if, there, if Joseph indeed was his father, then he was a sinner just like you and I. But the son of God, uh, it says, that holy thing that shall, be, uh, shall come forth from thee shall be called the son of God. That which is conceived in her, he says, is of the Holy Ghost. He is of God. It is God <laughs> in the flesh. He says, God sent forth his son. He sent him forth when? For what purpose? To save his people. Made of a woman, made under the law. I want you to, uh, don't skip over that under the law. He, every, everything that was against you and I, and, and brothers and sisters, the law was given not to give life, the law, there's not, by the deeds of the law, no flesh shall be justified. You know, there's people want to know, well, how does a person get saved? Well, if you just keep the, keep the Ten Commandments or if you do this and you do this, and there's all kinds of ways that people have of getting man into heaven. But really, there's only one. Jesus said, listen to this, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. There is no other. He said, no man cometh to the Father except by me. I draw them to me. When the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made under the law. He fulfilled the law. He didn't come to destroy it. He came to fulfill it. And he fulfilled it to a jot and to a tittle. Everything, every, uh, every, just about, I mean, we could look over into the Old Testament. Everything that Jesus did was a fulfillment of some scripture. Now, what did he come for? It, this is very beautiful. It says he came for a purpose. What did he come to do? He came to redeem them that were under the law that they, will, that they might receive the adoption of sons. I mean, adoption, that's a beautiful point. That's a beautiful thought. I have an adopted grandson. He didn't choose his parents. They chose him. He didn't, he didn't pay any of the money. And I'll tell you one thing, adoption's not free. But there's a legal thing that has to happen. You can't just say, well, I, I, like, I, I like that little girl right there. I'm just going to get her and take her home with me. I want, she's going to be mine. If you do, this, this highway patrolman will be at, at your door arresting you. It's illegal for you to just pick up a child and take him. 
It has to go through the legal aspects. I mean, the first thing that happens in adoption is you must love children. Why would somebody adopt a child if they didn't love it? Hmm? But then you have, there is another, there, there's, there is the concept of, of choosing. Here's all of these children. There may be 150 children in this orphanage. And we're talking here about the entire human race. God didn't choose all of them. He chose the ones he wanted. He adopted them. He picked this one, this one, this one. Well, so that's not fair. Uh, by the fact that he didn't pick all these others, he just made them uh, 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 go to hell. No, he didn't. Every one of them was going there, and if he hadn't picked them up, they would have all gone there. God just left them right where they were in sin, but he, he chose those that he wanted. He said, well, I, I don't understand that choice. Well, I don't either, but I'll tell you one thing. God had the right to choose, and he came to redeem them or wonder the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. Now, listen to this beautiful point, and because you are sons, your sons. You were sons before he chose you. How, what kind of son were you? He said, because you are sons. That you were a covenant son. You were a son of God by, uh, uh, by choice. God put your name there. He wrote your name in the book and he gave you to the son. He said, son, all of these that are given to you, you've got to go down there and you've got to become as they are and redeem them from their sins. Will you do it? You see, he, he came willingly. And because you are sons, and I'm going to add, because you're a covenant son, God has sent forth, now here's, it, here's the Holy Spirit. We, we've got the Trinity set forth in, these, in this verse. Here is God the Father sending the Son. And here is the Holy Spirit. It says, and because you are sons, God sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your heart, whereby you cry, Abba, Abba. You cry, Father, Father. You know, the greatest, the greatest, the, the most beautiful, the most beautiful sound of a mother when that baby's born. She's, she's listening for something. She's in labor. They say, it comes forth. You know what makes her happier than anything in the world? That, day, that doctor slaps that little baby and he begins to cry. If that baby was not alive in the womb, he would not cry. I'm telling you that, that death, uh, uh, I mean that life comes uh, at conception. It doesn't come uh, when that baby is, comes forth. Uh, that's a child at the very beginning. John the Baptist uh, uh, leaped for joy in his mother's womb uh, before he was ever born of his mother. Uh, that child is a viable child at Conception. That's when life begins. Conception. When the blood begins to flow. Now, there, there's something, I'm, and I'm way over. I, I'm, can I just quote one? I'm just going to read this and then I'll close. This is John chapter. This is John chapter 5. Okay, John chapter 5. Listen to this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life. Do you believe? You know, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is what? He's born of God. And shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall what? Live. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given the Son to have life in himself. And hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in thee which all... Listen to this part. Listen. There, when, when a person is born to the Spirit of God, God sends the Spirit into his heart, and he lives. He said, that's a, that's a wonderful thing, isn't it? He said, marvel not at this. Don't be so uh, amazed at that. Listen to this. This is even greater than that. And uh, uh, he said, marvel not at this. Uh, 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 marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in thee which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. 
You believe he's able to do that? That all he just does is just say, come forth. And I, I, I love that when we're at cemetery to, to say one of these days, God's just going to speak to all, and he's going to say, come forth. And it says all the, we either believe this or we don't believe it. If you don't believe Genesis 1, 1, then you can't believe this. But if you leave this, he says, all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. 